Ashley McIver, uh, Sunday morning in Whistler at Chickamas. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's the day after my birthday. I'm 29 now. Oh, <laughs> and it's still sunny in Whistler and summery weather, so it's good. Fantastic. What did you do with your summer? Uh, I've been training hard with my team, a lot of gym stuff in July, and then I actually was over in London for the Olympics in early August. Um, the Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade brought me over to help with some events and uh, basically represent Canada and shine a light on our competitive excellence. Uh, Abro- a, abroad at the Olo- London Olympics. Yeah, they had a bunch of uh, global business leaders uh, in the Larkin Club, which was the High Commissioner's Club uh, that he was hosting them in, and I was just there helping host. It was great. Oh, I see. And where were you, where are you training in Whistler? Here at the Athlete Centre in, uh, in Chequemus Crossing. And um, We have a great trainer here, Craig Hill, and the whole team was out for most of July for about three weeks. Uh, from all over the country, so it's uh, it's good to have the teammates to work out with. I see. Were you training up on the glacier up until the end? No, I had uh, the third surgery on my knee uh, this spring. I just had a scope done just to clean up some scar tissue, and uh, so I was just in Mount Hood at the end of August for a couple of weeks, and that was my first time back on snow after those surgeries. Oh, I see. And that went well? Yeah, it went well. It's it's still not good. It's progressing, uh, so that's that's a positive. It's uh, it's just it's definitely looking promising. It's just uh, it's still going to take a bit of time to get back at it. Are you going to be competing in December and January when the tour starts up again? Uh, I should be. Yeah, I, th- I think I'll be fine for that. That's, that's the anticipated schedule. Yeah, yeah. Our first race is at Nakiska in Alberta, so that's pretty cool to have a World Cup on home turf. And, and, yeah, uh, Nakiska. Yeah, and that's then. Great. Uh, we'd be over to Europe, actually, for a couple of races before Christmas, which is unusual. Usually our season doesn't start uh, until a little bit later. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. So what have you been doing with yourself, you know, after the Olympics? You Are you making a living as a professional ski cross or? Yeah, yeah, I've been doing a lot of uh, speaking engagements and a lot of different things for sponsors and, of course, uh, a lot of charity events and fundraisers, which are always cool. It's pretty amazing that I can, you know, just show up in the foundation or whatever organization it is will raise more money just because I'm there so without even having to financially donate I can donate my time and uh, they benefit from it it's a, it's a pretty amazing thing what's it what's it like walking around Whistler you mentioned you were born here and everybody mm-hmm. as we've just been here for an hour seems to recognize you as you walk <laughs> by as either a friend or an associate who knows you mm-hmm. um, through your parents or through your your, uh, mm-hmm. your endeavors here in town what's it what's it like walking around town oh I love it Whistler's so full of uh, you know I mean people who have excelled in their sports and all sorts of different things and I think that that's what makes it so cool is it's not uh, it's not a situation where, where people are like awkward or uh, overbearing when they run into you everyone just has a mutual respect for um, the athletes in town and they'll just say hey good job or you know like how's it going and whereas I, I, I've seen um, like even in bigger cities like a lot of higher profile athletes have a tough time going anywhere without people saying can I get a picture like you know as they're like about to bite into their sandwich or something so overzealous fans yeah so I think we're really lucky here in Whistler to just have a bunch of really cool people that are just supportive um and happy to be participating in any of their sports whether they're you know achieving good results on paper or just out there having fun I think that's what we love about Whistler so much there's um we just saw in the newspapers with what happened with Kate uh, Middleton and uh, the Prince. Have you had any uh, basically paparazzi following you around trying to get candid photos, anything like that? No, people are pretty cool. I think um, particularly in Canada, just with the success we had at our home games, the media are generally trying to uh, shine a positive light on what we've done and um, the work we've put in and um, help us to remain heroes in the you know kids' the minds eyes. and the people we've inspired. Um, I see, because you're, you're, you know, your, uh, yours and, and Mayel's um, existence after winning the gold medal seems to have gone fairly smoothly, whereas mm-hmm. we all saw what happened with Ross's win afterwards, and uh, there was some talk in town of controversy and this and that, and um, and it, it didn't appear to go very smooth, mm-hmm. and um, and so, you know, as we saw, the one of the newspapers was willing to write, you know, run an article about his divorce proceedings and stuff yeah. like that, and it all seems to be fair game once you win the gold medal. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I just noticed that you and Mayel seem to have been very uh, things have seemed to have gone very smoothly yeah and um, do you guys bump into each other a lot of yeah quite a bit and Mayel's just a genuine sweetheart she's just a really really nice girl and uh, I think both Mayel and I always try and um, you know make good decisions and do what we can to keep the, the sport uh, you know seen in a positive light by the general public and the fans and stuff and 
uh, I think that maybe that's why it's gone so smoothly. We've uh, we've worked hard to maintain that uh, that image and that reputation for ourselves as athletes and for our sports. So you're cognizant of, of what oh, you're yeah, doing every day. So yeah. no Lost Lake uh, doc for you or anything. No, like that, no. I, it's it's yeah. I mean, you have to be professional about it. It's it's. Um, Once you're sponsored. Yeah, it's part of you know, but it's it, that's what's involved with endorsing people's brands and um, you know other people aligning themselves with you, with your personal brand and. Um, it's 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 important. Like a big part of what, why I do what I do is to inspire everyone, but you know mainly women and kids to um, you know lead a healthy, active lifestyle. And uh, I think that it's important that you know when I run into people like that, I'm friendly, and <laughs> I think Mael's really good about that. And um, it's just it's all part of it. Yeah, she's in uh, Border Cross, I do believe. Yeah. And um, so I imagine you see each other through, you know, the Canadian Olympic Committee and various committees mm-hmm. probably, you know, put you, solicit you guys together. At yeah, times. Tourism BC does a lot of stuff with the two of us. So yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, so you've become somewhat of a bit of an ambassador for the Canadian sport, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. And uh, that sounds sounds very nice. Uh, mm-hmm. Whistler seems to be a place that attracts athletes because of the snow base we have, mm-hmm. the ability to, to ski and snowboard, you know, from late November till mm-hmm. the beginning of August up on the glacier and then some if Whistler Blackcomb lets you go and uh, do, you, do you think that that gives Whistler a big advantage? Oh yeah I mean this is the best training ground in the world uh, I was fortunate enough to grow up with it as my backyard um, but I think the other thing that attracts all these superstar athletes to Whistler is the people and the community and um, it's interesting whenever I'm asked in interviews who were your idols growing up or who uh, you know who did you really look up to and who inspired you to to you know stick at it or stick with it and um, work hard at your sport and I, it's always it's, it's a tough question to answer for me because they're never really household names it's just these people in this community who exude a genuine love for what they do and a passion for what they do whether they've uh, you know achieved competitive results or or not they're just genu- genuinely you know in love with the lifestyle and I think that's what draws athletes to the town. It's easy to <laughs> immerse yourself in your sport. I think there's a, you make me think of a guy named Bernie who does the start gate at the Kokanee Valley Race yeah. Race. And, uh, you know, I've known him for so many years. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we're the lady with the red hair who works for Whistler Blackcomb who always manages the athletes at the events. Uh, I forget her name, but there are certain certain locals that, st- sure. that stick out like that. And yeah. they, uh, it's very much a culture here. Definitely. And um, so, it's what, what do you what do you find about the uh, like it, it, you have you have Whistler here, and there's the culture of just those who ride, and then you know there's the free ride, as you if you want to call it. Then there's those who actually consider registering a fist license mm-hmm. and taking it seriously. And which 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 route would you take? Like if you move to Whistler, if you watch too many more ski, Warren Miller ski mm-hmm. videos, and you quit your job in Toronto and move to Whistler to be a ski bum and you end up you know it, it becomes plausible at that point for you to become an Olympic athlete well it's interesting because that's something I've always battled with I, I grew up in a pretty competitive environment with alpine ski racing and I stopped when I was 16 um, because I wasn't really enjoying it and because I broke my leg and then when I got back into winter sports I was snowboarding a little bit and I was free skiing and then I started racing ski cross a little bit and then I, I stopped again because <laughs> I just wasn't really enjoying it and I'd rather be free skiing and uh, you know, sort of on my own schedule, skiing powder and hitting cliffs. And, and then when they put the sport in the Olympics, I was like, okay, I got to buckle down and focus on the competitive side of this. And um, It's, it's uh, I mean, as somebody just moving to Whistler from Toronto, quitting their day job, I think I, there would be no reason to get, I mean, some people thrive on that competition, but uh, I don't know. It, that would be an interesting scenario for them to just quit their job and move here and start racing. But, uh, it's been done before. <laughs> I've seen people have success with it. And a lot of people, it's like our weekly mountain bike races, the loony races. It's, a lot of people are just, have, you know, it's just fun for them to get out and sort of gauge their ability against other people's, whether they come 22nd or 56th or whether they win. Like, it's, some of people can enjoy any of those just as much as the other. That's why at the Kokanee we have people who are 40, 50 yeah. years old racing, and they've yeah. been doing it for 10 or 20 years because yeah. that's the lifestyle. Yeah, and they may, may and never have won a race, and they still enjoy it. I don't really yeah. understand those people personally, but <laughs> 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 kudos to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely all good. So you mentioned that your height and your, your somewhat lankiness, as you want to call it, is good, acts good as a suspension for a skier cross. Yeah, it's just it helps me keep my skis on the snow, and the, you know, the objective in the, like, the big rollers, the whoops, is to really generate as much speed as you can from the downhill 
transitions to sort of carry yourself up and over the next one. And the longer your legs are, the more suspension you have, and it's, uh, it just makes it all go a little bit smoother. Oh, great. So mm-hmm. you mentioned that you're still sitting on the fence about trying to qualify for uh, the the next Winter Olympic Games? Well, I'm I'm definitely going to try and qualify. I just am not sure that my knee will come around. We'll see. It's, oh, uh, I see. It's looking promising, like I said. Uh, it's just been a, a long, long uh, process, this rehabilitation, because I've heard it so many times. And um, Yeah, I mean, I was just skiing with my team in Hood, and uh, I, was, I was, feeling re- was feeling good by the end of the camp, which is definitely good so we'll see I don't know I, it, this year it's it's an interesting season we have 18 World Cups this year and so I, I can't imagine I'll be, I'll, I'll be doing any of or all of them I, I can't even really imagine that anybody will be doing all of them because um, it's just really intense uh, as far as scheduling goes but the important races this year are the World Championships in Norway and then um, there are a couple of other races that I, I know I, you know I have a history of doing well uh, at that I'll definitely participate in and then uh Beyond that, it'll be kind of into Olympic qualification based on the World Champs results and, uh, I guess, overall rank this season. Are you advocating that the World Cup skier cross come back to Whistler? Yeah, that would be great. Whistler at all? Yeah, I mean, Whistler would be the, the best place to, to host a World Cup ski cross in Canada, that's for sure. In North America, really. Um, and it's yeah, it's a bit of, it's a bit frustrating that we haven't been able to yet. But yeah, they, they're working on it. We'll see. I think, it's, uh, I think there's a good chance it'll happen. Well, that sounds good. Is there anything else you'd like to add to your comments today? No, I think that's good. Thank that you. That sounds good. Life in Whistler is good. <laughs> yeah, life's great. <laughs> well, that sounds fantastic. Well, thank you very much for your time today. All right, thank you. Cheers.